For our AP Chemistry final project, we, Emily Kim and Maya Ponde, performed the experiment known as Golden Rain. Lead 2 nitrate solution was mixed with a solution of potassium iodide to form aqueous potassium nitrate and solid lead 2 iodide precipitate. This is an example of a double replacement reaction. In order to create the aqueous solution of potassium iodide, one gram of solid potassium iodide was dissolved in 250 milliliters of water. The potassium iodide was able to dissolve because of the polarity of water, as well as the ionic bonding that occurs between the potassium and iodine molecules. When a molecule is polar, it means that there's a greater electron density around one molecule than the others. This means that the part of the electron with a greater electron density will be negatively charged. The atom that has a greater electron density is the more electronegative atom, which is the oxygen in the case of water. The negatively charged oxygen attracts the positively charged potassium atom. Potassium is positively charged because it gave up its sole valence electron to ionically bond with the iodine atom. The positively charged hydrogen atoms on the water molecule attract the negatively charged iodine atoms on the potassium iodide molecules and thus break the potassium iodide molecules apart. This can easily be summed up by the phrase opposites attract. This type of bonding that occurs between ions and polar molecules is known as ion dipole bonding. An aqueous solution was also made of lead 2 nitrate, which is significantly less soluble than potassium iodide in water. Lead nitrate solubility in water is only 54.3 grams of lead nitrate per 100 grams of water, compared to potassium iodide's 144 to 100. The solubility of lead nitrate can be increased by increasing the temperature of the lead nitrate solution. Now, why would increasing the temperature of the water increase the solubility of the lead 2 nitrate? By increasing the temperature of a solution, the average kinetic energy of the molecules in that solution is also increased. The average kinetic energy of molecules is directly proportional to the temperature. Though this is a principle of the kinetic molecular theory, and thus describes the behavior of gases, it is also applicable to liquids and solids. In order for the collision of two molecules to result in a reaction, certain standards must be met. The molecules must be oriented properly and the molecules must possess a minimum amount of energy known as the activation energy. The increase in temperature increases the amount of energy the molecules have. Increasing the number of collisions that occur means that there will also be an increase in the number of molecules that successfully react. This is why the solid lead 2 nitrate had to be added to a warm flask of water to create an aqueous solution. When the two aqueous solutions were combined, potassium iodide being added to the lead 2 nitrate in order to minimize chances of coming into contact with the lead, a silky yellow solid was produced. This solid was small crystals of lead iodide that dissolved when the full 500 milliliter solution was heated. The clear solution was allowed to cool slowly. As it did, solid lead 2 iodide began to recrystallize in the potassium nitrate solution little specks slowly forming until the entire bottom of the flask looked as though it were covered in golden raindrops. The lead 2 iodide precipitate formed because, at a lower water temperature, the lead 2 iodide could no longer be soluble. The formation of these golden hexagonal specks is what gives the experiment the name Golden Rain. In the double replacement reaction that is the basis of the experiment Golden Rain, two moles of aqueous potassium iodide reacted with one mole of aqueous lead 2 nitrate to form one mole of solid lead 2 iodide and two moles of potassium nitrate. It was important in measuring the amount of solid potassium iodide and lead nitrate to make sure the potassium iodide was in excess in order to ensure that all of the lead reacted. By doing stoichiometry with Ki's molar mass, it was calculated that one gram of the solid contained 0.006204 moles of it. This was divided by 0.25 liters to calculate the molarity of the potassium iodide solution to be 0.0241 molar. In the same way, it was found that the 0.800 grams of solid lead 2 nitrate contained 0.00242 moles of it, 
and that the molarity when dividing the number by 0.25 liters was 0.00968 molar. This further proves that the potassium iodide was in excess because the molarity of its 250 milliliter solution is more than double that of the lead 2 nitrate solution. The concentration of the end solution, potassium nitrate, was calculated by doing stoichiometry with the limiting reagent, lead 2 nitrate. According to the reaction equation, the moles of potassium nitrate produced from the experiment was double that of the original moles of lead 2 nitrate, making it 0.00484 moles of potassium nitrate and making the end solution's molarity 0.00968 molar. Now we're solving for KSP, which is the equilibrium constant for solid dissolving in water. If the reactant is a solid or liquid, it is not included in the mathematical equation. Equilibrium constant is the comparison of the rate of the forward and reverse reactions once they reach a constant rate. If the K value is greater than 1, the concentration of the products are greater at equilibrium. If it's less than 1, the concentration of reactants is greater than that of the products. If the K value equals 1, then at equilibrium, the forward and reverse reaction rates are equal. KSP is the division of concentration of products over reactants. Since lead to iodide is a solid, it is not included in the equation. Our KSP value was 16.7, which is greater than 1, indicating that the reaction went almost entirely to completion. The lead to iodide precipitate could then be carefully filtered out of the end solution, collected, and carefully stored. Proper cleanup of this experiment was extremely important, as lead solutions are very toxic, especially if ingested. An oversaturated, hot, aqueous sodium bicarbonate solution, aka baking soda, was created and used to neutralize and rinse out or off anything that came into contact with the lead solutions. Mixing the two formed a lead carbonate precipitate that could be thrown out. The solution left over contained baking soda and potassium nitrate, which could be disposed of down the drain. Thanks for watching!